And we're continuing on with Adobe Illustrator 2014 release, Classroom in a Book, Chapter 11. This is Part B. I'm on the top of page 339. You should have just saved after you applied the paper uh, filled to the type for the text of Jazz. And you can apply an appearance attribute to a layer. You can apply it to a sublayer. So you can make everything on a layer like 50% opaque, or you can make everything on a layer uh, that uh, you know is, is can make everything have a drop shadow on it, or something like that. Every object on that layer will have that applied, uh, even if you put a new piece into that layer. So if you make another uh, section on there and draw another object on that layer, that uh, that uh, appearance quality is going to be applied to it as well. So you know you can you can uh, look at uh, go back to lesson eight, and uh, uh, there's a section in there applying appearance attributes to a layer, but that was back in lesson eight on organizing your work artwork with layers. We're going to use a live effect now. Effects alter the appearance of an object without changing the artwork. So you can put an effect um, to add something to the appearance attribute. You can edit it, you can move it, you can delete it, you can duplicate it, and you can do that all in the appearance panel. When you apply a raster effect, the original vector data is rasterized and it's lost. So um, you're, you're going to have some, some issues to do with that, but um, the raster resolution needs to be addressed. And there's a section in Illustrator Help about document raster effect settings. So you can read that if that's what you're going to use. There are vector effects and there are raster effects. Uh, you can click the effect menu to see the two different types. They're going to be uh, let me click off to deselect and I will go to effect. You've got the uh, uh, 3D convert to shape, crop marks, paths, pathfinder, rasterize, stylize, warps, and then there's the effect gallery. These are the Photoshop effects. That's the bottom half are the rasters, the top half are the uh, illustrator vector effects. So we're going to look at how to apply and how to edit these and then you're going to explore a little bit more for what you can do in Illustrator to get an idea of the range of effects that are available. Effects are applied using the effect menu or the appearance panel and they can be applied to objects, groups, or layers. We're going to learn how to apply an effect using the effect menu and then you're going to do one using the appearance panel. So we're going to go back down to the trumpet and you're going to uh, pick that up and go to effect. Remember we took that drop shadow off earlier. We're going to put one back on. So you want to go to stylize drop shadow. Now in the uh, drop shadow box make sure that we have multiply which is the default change the opacity up to a hundred percent you want your offset we are going to change this to a third or uh, sorry three hundredths of an inch rather than uh, five change that one to three as well for your y offset your blur needs to go up and if you do this if you use your, your up and down arrows, it's going to go much, uh, much more than what we want. We want a very small blur, so it's a 0 .04. Oh, I accidentally got two decimals in there. So it's four hundredths of an inch. Put that space back in. And where uh, it says darkness, we're going to select darkness and change that to 50%. So we're turning off the color and we're just going to put in darkness at 50%. You can preview this and so that you can see, there we go, what you're doing as you're working on it. 
and then say OK to accept it. Uh, should, you should be saving periodically, and I'm not going to do the saves again because they take quite a while. Um, effects are live and they can be edited, edited after they're applied. So you can edit the effect in the appearance panel by selecting the object with the effect applied and then clicking the name of the effect or double clicking the attribute URL. This displays the dialog box for that effect and any changes that you make to the effect will then be updated in the artwork. So we're going to alter that drop shadow that we just did so we're going to go in and if you just double click on uh, well actually single click on uh, uh, on the drop shadow we're going to change the opacity now to 75 percent and you should be able to just uh, tab off of that and it'll put the percent in there and make sure you check preview and you can see the change and then select OK. Now we're going to do a little bit more here. We're going to go to Object and Ungroup. Remember we grouped it earlier so now we're going to ungroup this and the drop shadow isn't applied anymore. When an effect is applied to a group it affects the group as a whole so if they're not grouped together anymore you take the grouping off the effect isn't there. So I'm going to go up and go to edit and I'm going to undo and that will put that effect back on because uh, I undid that. If I simply went back up and said group that effect would be gone and I'd have to reapply it completely. Next we're going to style the text again another text with a warp effect. Now text can have all kinds of effects applied including warp. We did that with uh, the poster. We're going to use a warp effect to warp the date. The difference between what we did in Lesson 7 and this is that the warp effect can be turned on and off, it can be edited, or it can be removed e very easily. So with the selection tool you want to go up to the top and pick up the May 10th to the 17th and now go into effect and select warp and we want to pick up flag. In the warp options to create an arcing effect set, set the bend to 20 percent okay and hit tab to get to the next which is the horizontal which we're going to leave at zero and zero if with your uh, preview on. Um, you, I mean you can play with this if you want to because you can see it, it will shift but I'm leaving mine at zero if you want to make a change to yours feel free to um, and then click OK. So we have a slight little, little wave going on in there. With the warp text object still selected Click the visibility icon next to the warp flag effect in your appearance panel and the appearance is no longer applied. So with the type tool um, we're going to go in now because now we can do some editing. So we're going to change this to the 18th instead of the 17th and it's much easier to do your editing this way and then we can, uh, oh, we're also going to change the color of the text. So select it all. Uh, we want to change the fill color to white. We are going to use do that, which is going to make it not being able to be seen. Um, if the appearance panel is still open and the cursor is in the text, you will see that the effect isn't listed because we're using the type tool. And the effect was applied to the area, not to the text. So now go back and pick up your selection tool and click the, to the next um, or click next to the warp and you're still not going to be able to see it because we have white on white. 
So just click off to the side and save. Now, just for a note, at the bottom of page 342, editing paths with a Pathfinder effect. Uh, Pathfinder effects are like working with the Pathfinder commands in the panel, except they're applied as effects. They don't change the artwork. So you can look about Look back on lesson three using shapes to create artwork for a postcard. And there's a section in there uh, about working with the Pathfinder panel. So that's just a reference back to the other cha uh, chapter that we've already done. Now we're going to offset the stroke for the jazz text. And we're going to create the appearance of multiple stacked shapes. So now with your selection tool, pick up the text jazz and we're going to go into the appearance panel again and the stroke color, which right now we have no stroke. We want to select the white stroke and we can just deselect or I'll click off to the side uh, to return to the appearance panel. Now, the, the uh, stroke weight default is going to come up as one point. With the stroke attribute row selected, so we need this row selected, you can see it's highlighted, and go to Effect, Path, and we want Offset Path. You're going to get this dialog box up. Go ahead and select Preview so you can see what's going on with it. And we want to change the offset to a negative 4 one hundredths of an inch. And then you can say OK. In the Appearance panel, Click the this disclosure triangle, new mouth, can't do a thing with it, uh, to the left of the words stroke one point to toggle it open if it isn't already. Now mine's already dropped down. The offset of path effect is a subset of that stroke. This indicates that the offset path effect is applied only to the stroke. It's not applied to either of the fills, it's only applied to the stroke. So now Deselect and save. The next thing we're going to do is apply a raster effect. Now the raster effect uh, uh, generates pixels, not vector data. Raster effects include SVG filters and anything that is in the bottom, well there it is, any of these, artistic, blur, stroke, br or brush strokes, distort, all of this is going to um, apply and create pixels. You can also apply these to vector or bitmap objects. We're going to apply a Photoshop effect, which is a raster effect, to the text that says festival. So Next we're going to go down and click on the text for festival. Go to Effect, Texture, and select Texturizer. When you choose most of the Photoshop effects, not all of them, but most of them, the Filter Gallery dialog box comes up. This is a lot like working with filters in Adobe Photoshop, which we'll get into in the end of the semester, or actually in just a couple of weeks. Uh, you can access filter galleries in there. And in the Illustrator gallery, you can try out different raster effects to, so that you can see how they affect your artwork. So what we're going to do now is choose Fit in View, and that should get everything to fit for you. And actually, yes, 100% fit in view. So that brings all the text up. And I'm going to pick the rest of this up on the next uh, segment.